Hey, what's going on everyone? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number 13, Dynamic Based Signal Processing. So we're actually going to be learning some things about compression, so fire up your Pro Tools and we'll get started. Alright everyone, hopefully you have a Pro Tools session brought up right now. Now if you don't, don't worry about it. All you need to do is take plenty of notes and apply this information as soon as you get the chance. Of course, it's always preferred that you uh, kind of uh, work along uh, in Pro Tools so that you get a better reference point. But if you'd like, just take plenty of notes and apply this information as soon as you get the chance. Now what we're going to be learning today is how to compress using uh, the compression tools in Pro Tools. Now this example that I set up is uh, actually a, a MIDI sound that has a choir style voice. So it's going to be kind of like a vocal, not 100% like a vocal. It's going to be more like a pad synth or something like that with vocal qualities. Okay. Now just to let you know, uh, what I'm going to show you is just kind of like the starting points of how to actually use a compressor and this technique won't be applicable to every single instrument just uh, you know just kind of like a starting point for most okay so let's go ahead and uh, hear how this sounds and you guys are of course going to recognize this track as I use it a bunch of times already so let's go ahead and take a quick listen and uh, also while you're listening uh, you'll see the uh, the volume change up and down, which is going to give this uh, track a little bit of dynamics. And you're going to look for that right here. Okay. Okay. So you could see how. Um, I affected this uh, the dynamics of this particular track by uh, you know uh, using automation on the volume. Okay, so you you saw that illustrated right here, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to adjust this so that it's a little bit more uh, even but still sounds natural, as if it's a vocal. Because if you overly uh, you know compress a vocal, it's definitely noticeable. It takes kind of the life out of that track. It sounds you know just artificial, doesn't sound right. So uh, when, when you're compressing something like vocals, you want to kind of just uh, be very smooth with it. You don't want to, you know, do very, uh, I guess, extreme uh, adjustments. You want to make it sound as natural as possible. So let's go ahead and bring up a compressor. So I'm going to the inserts area, clicking right here, uh, multi-channel, dynamics, moving over to the compressor limiter. All right. Cool, and you guys probably remember this from the last video. If not, you guys have been using compressors for a while now, and you have an idea what this looks like and how to use it. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and re-listen to the track once more. Okay, and what we're going to go ahead and keep in mind of is uh, the lowest point of uh, volume right here in the level in. And uh, from there, that's when we're going to go ahead and set our threshold. Now, uh, every instrument is actually uh, you know, compressed differently. Just keep that in mind. This is going to be kind of uh, what you would need to do for like a vocal or like maybe a, a pad synth or something like that uh, that has similar qualities to a vocal. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and hit play, and we'll keep our eyes fixed on this meter. And for the most part, let me just also recommend that uh, you use your ears for a lot of this. You don't really use your eyes, although there are graphs and numbers and everything that we can see right here. Really just try to use your ears but uh, for this first instant, when setting a threshold, I also do recommend that you uh, watch the meter. So let me go ahead and hit play. So it looks like it kind of starts around uh, negative 20 decibels, it's like right around here that I noticed that it kind of, you know, the sound really began at. Uh, and also, as you noted, I also kept it at the factory default. You can go ahead and just move everything down to like, uh, you know, you know, down like this and kind of just get a fresh start if you want. Um, but you know, using a factory default will also work. There's also a bunch of different um, we heard just different settings that you could use, kind of starting points. But you know what I would recommend is just starting from scratch and then really uh, adjusting from there. So as we saw right here, it was kind of around negative 20 dB. So we want to go ahead and move that around here ish. Actually, let's go ahead and give it a little bit of leeway. A negative 2 dB. Okay. 
And that's the first thing that we'll go ahead and set. We'll take another listen, and then from there, we'll go ahead and move over to our ratio. Now, again, what the ratio does, well, let's start with the threshold. Uh, a quick refresher on the threshold. What this does is says, okay, before the compressor begins working, it has to reach at least negative 22 dB. If it doesn't reach negative two, uh, 22 dB, none of the other stuff right here will even be activated. So let's go ahead and uh, you know make sure that we know that that's uh, what the threshold is. Now the next thing that we're going to go ahead and adjust is something called the ratio. And what the ratio does, it says, okay, so it went over negative uh, 22 dB. How much am I going to lower this down by? Okay, what's the ratio going to be like? Is it, you know, for every one decibel that it goes over, I lower it down one decibel? Or it could be for every one decibel it goes over, I lower it down two decibels. It really depends on how you want to do this track. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to the sound and begin adjusting. A negative, uh, or actually at ratio three to one, or actually four to one, it really started to sound really unnatural, which I didn't like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it at ratio three to one. Okay. Also, another thing that you'll notice is that the attack and the release is just sounding really outrageous, and even the knee, every just everything just sounds really rigid. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna smoothen this out a little bit more. The next step that we're gonna want to go ahead and pay attention to is the knee. Uh, that's this uh, area right here, and this is going to determine how smooth this uh, compressor is going to work. Okay, so you want to have a softer knee, and if you move this around, you'll see how it becomes more rounded. And we're going to figure out exactly how rounded it should be to fit this particular track. All right, so I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to begin adjusting from there. You know what, I think it really started to sound a little bit smoother right around here, 13.5 decibels. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it there. I'm going to just go ahead and trust my intuition on that. Uh, and then the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and adjust is the attack. Now, if you don't remember what the attack is, essentially this is going to be exactly how soon after the threshold is met will the compressor begin compressing. This was almost immediately. Uh, so if you notice, you'll, you kind of get this like kind of vibrato sound. Uh, and I want to go ahead and adjust that a little bit. I don't want it to be uh, so quickly. I want it to kind of have a more gradual uh, kind of a onset. So uh, let's go ahead and hit play and begin adjusting from uh, right here. All right, let's go.
You know what, actually, I really like the way that sounds. It sounds more natural now. Uh, so I guess I'm ready to move on to the next part, which is going to be the release. Now, of course, now what the release is, is um, how quickly after the fact that the compressor has been used or, or activated, how quickly will that be turned off? Now, this is almost an immediately, uh, it's going to immediately shut off. Okay, uh, so you want to go ahead and adjust this set accordingly to uh, whatever track that you're using. Now, for example, if you are, let's say we're doing a, uh, like a snare or something like that, or something percussive, like a, you know, anything that's percussive, like a, let's say a, a snare. Uh, you might want to have the attack right away. And um, that would be because it's very percussive and uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that the compressor starts working right away since it's such a quick sound. So you're going to want to do that. And again, the release, you want to go ahead and make sure that it also releases pretty quickly after that because, you know, once the snare hits, more than likely, uh, you know, a few uh, quarter measures afterwards usually or a couple, you know, even just a measure afterwards, you have the snare coming around again. It's usually like, uh, you know, uh, quarter beats or, 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 or half beats uh, that it's coming, coming around again. So you want to go ahead and have shorter release times as well. Okay, but since we're working with a with a vocal, it's okay to go ahead and have a uh, slower attack time and a slower release time. Let's go ahead and begin adjusting the release right now. Okay, I kind of like it around here, and to be honest, uh, when I was moving this knob around, I actually had my eyes shut. I don't really want to rely on the graph or the uh, meters, especially not at this point anymore. I really want to rely on my ears and exactly, you know, uh, how I feel it should sound, okay? So now the next thing to do is to go ahead and bring up the overall volume. You know, this is kind of like you can do this or, you, you know, you don't have to do this. It really depends on your preference. Uh, but, you know, essentially, once you start using a compressor, what it does, it helps, you know, like I said, kind of uh, bring the uh, higher parts that's too high lower and it brings the lower parts, uh, you know, a little bit up. But it doesn't really do too much, you know, essentially you're losing volume. You know, it doesn't really do anything in regards to bringing the overall sound up. Uh, so essentially, the output becomes lower. So a lot of times people want to compensate the uh, output becoming lower by adding a little bit more gain. Now this is optional, but let me go ahead and uh, hit play again. And then I'll begin adjusting the gain to where I feel uh, sounds uh, nice and natural. Great. You know what? Actually, I really like it at negative 2 dB. I had my eyes shut again. Um, I wasn't, you know, watching the meters just yet. And then when I opened my eyes, I looked at the meter and I realized that, you know what, it's going right underneath uh, negative 1 decibel, getting close to uh, about 0 decibels and, you know, right close to the output. So this is actually a lot better than we had it before. Let me go ahead and hit bypass and we'll listen to it without any compression whatsoever and then we'll go ahead and uh, unbypass and see how it sounds afterwards okay see that just peaked now let's go ahead and uh, unbypass it and hear exactly how it sounds now
you know what? I think maybe I want to bring up the gain just a little bit, but not too much. Um, you know, I just realized that I was looking at the other meter, the input, rather than the output. And um, before it sounded uh, natural, but when I was looking at it this time, I noticed that I did lose a lot of volume. So let's go ahead and bring this up just a little bit. I'm going to hit play again and bring up the gain some more. And you know what? Um, I like it better like this. In fact, uh, when we reached the end of the loop right here, I really heard it get louder and it just sounded really interesting and I want to keep that. So let's go ahead and um, pretty much call it quits on this one. I'm going to unsolo this track and we're going to hear how it sounds in the mix. Maybe we'll bring it down just a little bit. Now, I, I think that sounds just about right. It actually fits in the mix really, really well. Uh, of course, I could uh, always fine-tune it just a little bit more, but that's pretty much what you would want to do with compression. Now, like I said before in the very beginning, obviously when you're uh, compressing a track, not every single track is going to be compressed the same exact way, so you definitely need to experiment, uh, but I hope this video was helpful, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Alright guys, that's all the information that I have for you today, but of course it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay? Now if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process, uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. Our staff is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% hiring success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.